Well, good day to you, everybody. This is Joe Van Cleve. Um, I'm over at Ethan Moses' uh, shop in Albuquerque, and we've been meeting here about every Tuesday working on uh, 3D printed camera ideas, box camera ideas. Lately, we've been into 3D printed ballpoint pens and notebooks. Just a wide variety of ideas. Well, this morning, Ethan texted me and he asked me to bring a few things over that sounded kind of different. And it turns out that there is a great need at this time for ventilators, respiratory ventilators, uh, because of the uh, lung infections that are caused by the, this COVID-19 virus. And it seems that in the United States, the uh, respirator or ventilator capacity is going to be taxed to its limit here in the coming weeks. And so Ethan is in contact with some medical people back east and he has this great idea for crowdsourcing through the DIY and 3D printing community, crowdsourcing a homemade ventilator system that doctors might opt to use for patients who are very severely sick. But I need Ethan to really explain in a little bit more detail how this is going to work. It seems like a lot of the dangers with the coronavirus are not that the virus will kill somebody if they have proper medical care, but that we have so many people getting the virus at the same time that um, the hospital system is overwhelmed and cannot provide care to everybody who needs it. Um, so one of the things that is a big limiting factor is how many ventilators, breathing machines that we have, right? So uh, the virus will fill your lungs with fluid um, or prevent you from breathing on your own and mechanical breathing can get a lot of people through it, uh, but we don't have enough ventilators. And so um, I'm sure Joe will put a link into the description to um, the project online where people are working on building things like reusable face masks or homemade and DIY N95 mask and mask filters or face shields and ventilators. Um, I'm thinking that between a minimum of 3D printing parts and or 3D printed parts and um, a bunch of household uh, goods like two liter soda bottle type of things that anybody can find, um, we can come up with a ventilator or parts of a ventilator that can be open source um, that people can work on in an emergency use. Um, to be clear, this is just for an emergency. Um, real medical equipment is way safer, right? The, the first rule of this whole thing is do no harm. Um, but if it's between somebody not being able to breathe and using a shoddy ventilator until there's a better ventilator available, um, I, I would like to help out in that situation. And so basically there, there have been ventilators in existence of one sort or another for a long, long time, uh, starting with like the iron lung with people with polio, um, which you know, uh, pushed and pulled on your chest and put your whole body in a pressure chamber. Um, this is not what we're trying to do. Um, basically, we want to force air into somebody's lungs and then suck it out and then force new air in. And so you need some sort of pump and a bunch of valves. Um, also, that air should be mixed with pure oxygen. Pure oxygen is toxic, um, but higher concentrations of oxygen in air helps when you can't push enough volume into somebody's lungs or, um, you know, it's covered in mucus and can't absorb as much oxygen from the air as normal. There is a need for valves that mix oxygen and air in the right proportions. There is a need for um, a heated bubbler device that uh, warms and humidifies the air. And then on the exhaust side, you know, hooking a uh, virus-ridden patient to a machine that's going to pump air in and out of their lungs is going to spray a lot of virus, which may be at the point when people are in tents uh, where everybody has the virus. It doesn't matter so much, um, but working on some sort of exhaust filter or um, sterilization contraption of sorts would also be a useful piece. So I see this as a number of pieces 
We're going to work on some of them today, starting with you know the very most simple, which is a 3D printable check valve, which you'd be able to print in maybe an hour. We just started working on it. You need <clears throat> some sort of motor and motor controller to run a pump. Um, you need a pump, which could be a piston system or a peristaltic system. You need an oxygen and air mixing valve. You need a heated humidifier for that stream of gas. And then you also need an exhaust sterilization unit. Um, so again, you know, if my little contribution to this is just a really easy to make check valve, um, you can buy check valves at Home Depot, and maybe that is a reasonable thing to use in place of this, but I would like to get other people who are smarter than me uh, interested in this and building pieces of a device like this. So today I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to design everything in Onshape. Um, Onshape is free online software for non-commercial uses. This is non-commercial. Everything we do will be open source. And the reason I'm using Onshape instead of SolidWorks is because you don't need any money. If you're anybody, you can make a free Onshape account. You can look at my account, which is COVID-19 parts. Um, we'll put the link in the description. Um, you can see all of my source files. You can copy my files. You can edit them and make it into something better. And so everything that I do in Onshape uh, will be available to be modified and used um, publicly. I guess the questions are less how it works than what it does. Right? So what I'm curious about is um, like the, the very basic things that I don't know is how much volume of air is it pushing per breath? So Ethan just got off the phone with an old childhood friend of his who is a doctor and she gave him a lot of insight into ventilator design and respirator design. Um, I still need to put the threads on the outer and the inner valve body, but basically, um, if I remove this top of the valve, this is a plug with a conical top over here. And this conical top matches the angle of this conical section over here. Uh, this plug can slide up and down in these uh, tracks. And so, um, when air pressure is moving this way, it will plug, hopefully, um, this orifice. And when air pressure is moving this way, it pushes the plug away, um, and this plug cannot uh, plug the part of the valve body over here. It will hit the side walls, uh, and air can flow around it. So this should be a reasonably working one-way valve. Um, but I'm just going to put some threads so that these two can screw together. So he's designing this check valve and he has an initial design, but it's pretty beefy. It uses a lot of material and it would take hours and hours. He says maybe upwards of 10 hours to print one of these. So he's, he's in a revision phase right now, trying to design a uh, simpler design that takes less material and can be quicker to print. And we were also kind of discussing alternative designs like diaphragm type check valves or flapper valves that might be simpler. I exported the first set of STL files from Onshape and threw them on my slicing program and estimated the print time and it was like 10 hours worth of prints which I could split down to three hours across three printers but still like if we're going to make a lot of them they need to go fast so I went back into the initial drawings and changed a lot of things really kind of pushed the tolerances without making it much smaller um, it's working on sort of the uh, internal diameter of a ventilator tube which is standardly 22 millimeters I might be forced to make a smaller design but I, I don't want to limit the airflow uh, if I can help it through the check valve um, and while I'm not a fluid dynamicist uh, nor do I have any software to evaluate that you know making a check valve that has basically no fluid impedance would be great I'm going to slice this new one that's at least a more efficient design of the original um, see how long that takes to print uh, and if it even works and then maybe we can scale that down further So Ethan, I understand you're we're designing another valve. Yeah, it's your design, uh, but I'm going to draw it in CAD. It looks like kind of a sand dollar. Um, what did you say? It was based on a heart valve that you saw? Heart valve I saw in some documentary. Yeah, flapper kind of a diaphragm valve. Yeah, so the idea is um, if you... Here, let's take a tube. 
uh, if you have a membrane like this, right, and you suck, the, the membrane will close off the tube. But when, when you blow, um, the membrane will open up. So um, I guess the heart valve was like uh, this thing with two holes here and a slit where they could be blown open. Um, these holes can't be really big because a flexible membrane like that will get sucked through the holes. So you came up with this sort of sand dollar, multiple slit, multiple hole type of thing. And so I think this could be produced um, really, really quickly and efficiently. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, you know, again, two hose fittings, but the bottom hose fitting or the top hose fitting, whatever, one side hose fitting is going to have this plate on it. And then the other side is going to just screw and hold um, this membrane that we should be able to cut with just a mat knife or a scissors. And it'll have these slits in it, although they won't go to the entire center. And maybe I will make some sort of brace um, so that the center is pinned down, right? Because if, yeah. if they curl up like pizza, uh, yeah. you noted that they might not come back into the yeah. right yeah. spot um, because they're flexible. So let's work on that. The, the sand dollar valve. Yeah. <laughs> the sand dollar 50 valve, Joe. <laughs> okay, so this original valve that we built was supposed to be like a very simple check valve, um, but we had some issues printing TPU, which is like a squishy material. And I don't like this design because um, not everybody can print TPU or even get their hands on the material, although it's pretty common if we had to, fine. Um, but you know, we, we kind of have like a PLA uh, slug in here that, let's see if I can get it lined up. Um, you know, supposedly when you pull uh, suction on this, uh, this point will yep. plug the hole, but it's just not fine enough tolerances. Maybe we could sand it to that point, but like we need something that comes out quick and doesn't require like hand artisanal valves, right? It just needs to work. And so, um, you know, geometrically, yeah, at least in the model, that would work, but that's no good. And so actually we've been using your design for um, these two halves screwed together, and it's just like, um, it's these six holes here, and then your original design was to put slits between the holes. I slit these guys here so when you blow, the bag can kind of um, puff up just a little bit. But that didn't work super well. Um, it never sealed perfectly. But I did notice this property of the valve is, this is just a Walmart bag, like a regular, whatever, little thin membrane. Um, you we'll probably use a Ziploc bag or something more food safe. Um, but watch this. Yeah. Yeah. So what we're thinking about doing is, we'll just let's just do it. I'm gonna use a piece of um, use tape. I'm just gonna use a dot of cyanoacrylate. I'm not sure that that's like the medically appropriate thing, but for the prototype, I think it's fine. I'm just gonna glue one side of this plastic bag membrane here. That's a little bit more than I wanted to glue. But okay. Just let that dry. I'm just going to trim the edges so that it'll fit inside the housing here. I think we could make like a cutting guide so yeah. that you could cut yeah. plastic bags. Yeah. But all right, let's see. Inhale some cyanoacrylate. Probably not good for me, but. Well, you know, my figuring is like, this is probably not kosher for hospitals, but if it's in our food supply, yeah, um, I am okay using it in an emergency situation. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we got it. Okay, so I think what I'll do is put some hose barbs on these sides so it can be connected to other machinery. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, maybe this is 25 cents worth of plastic pieces 
And I think it'll be fun to keep working on the rest of a respirator, but, um, you know, other people are working on it, and let's give them some valves. Um, yeah. Not that you couldn't buy a valve like this in the, you know, the hardware store, but this does not have industrial oils on it. Right. Um, you can print it out of POA, which is at least food safe. Right. Or PETG, which your milk jug is basically PETG. Mm -hmm. right? Um and it uses right now as a piece of a Walmart bag as a diaphragm, um, but I would suggest using something more food safe. Like. Maybe some people will test it. Yeah, with. a food storage bag. Yeah, a Ziploc bag. Yeah. Um, maybe I will um, make a quick mod to the design where the diaphragm is screwed instead of glued into place, uh, just to remove any, you know. Super glue, although you use super glue to glue your finger together today, I think it was invented for battlefield wounds. I wouldn't go breathing it all the time, um, but it's, it's a really tiny amount, so. Um, yeah, I hope somebody can use this um, usefully. So I'm not exactly sure, right? I. Um, Right now it takes about an hour and a half to print this whole thing um, and we'll make like a little jig to cut out the diaphragm so you can do that in a few seconds. I printed these kind of at the same thicknesses that I would normally print camera parts so that they're durable and you can beat on them but I think at this point they're maybe a little too durable and I don't know I hope to shave 20 to 50 percent off the print time by uh, maybe making them a little thinner walled where they're unnecessary and maybe, you know, making some of the space for the diaphragm to move, uh, eliminating that and um, kind of pushing the thread tolerances. You know, the deal with this is it's, it's speed of design too, right? We have like kind of an emergency coming up. And so I don't think I'm going to optimize this into the best check valve of all time, but I think within another, by midnight tonight, um, I will have a check valve that, that people can um, print and use as part of their ventilator machines and then maybe we can either move on to O2 and air mixing valves or um, air hydrators, um, humidifiers and bubblers or um, what's interesting to me is piston pumps or uh, peristaltic pumps of some sort. Well this was a surprise project uh Ethan hinted around this morning, texted to me, bring a few things, and it sounded a little different than what we normally do, but this is a great idea, crowdsourcing the 3D printer maker community to try to come up with some uh, gap-stop measures to help a lot of people who may have respiratory problems coming up in the next few weeks or months. And so we'll be keeping you informed uh, down below with some links as to uh, this project that you can get involved if you're a 3D printer maker. And anyways, thank you, Ethan, very much for this. And it was it was fun uh, uh, watching you design this and build these. And uh, the rest of you guys, stay safe out there. Stay well. Have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.